Welcome to yet another QPR versus Luton preview show. But this time you've got me and Dave and we're looking ahead to the league match, the away trip to Kenworth Road in the Championship on Friday night. In our last show before the international break, which seems to have come around very, very quickly since the start of the season. It's been a week of many deja vus for QPR. Of course, playing Luton twice, failing to beat a Plymouth side that was playing with only 10 men for over an hour, just like last season. But what wasn't deja vu at all was QPR making it to the third round of the League Cup for only the third time in the last 12 seasons. The win coming 4-1 on penalties against, of course, Luton. Did we deserve to make it through, Dave? Uh, yeah, just about, I think. I think we just felt deserved. Luton had a lot of chances in the game, didn't they? And they, they, their side they had out was a lot stronger than us. So I, I didn't, when I saw the teams at the start, I thought we were in a bit of trouble. But they stayed in the game well, and we had a few chances as well. We could have nicked it quite late on. We, had, we missed a few chances as well. So draw was probably fair. And then, you know, when it comes to penalties, they took the penalties really well. They were all good finishes. And I thought Joe Walsh had a really good game. And that was an excellent save, the first one. And uh, give us the advantage. So, you know, it's good to get through. I mean, it's a, it's mad that, you know, some teams haven't even entered the competition yet. And this is like the longest cup run we've had for years. We're all just celebrating. Yeah, I love a good cup run. Who doesn't? But it, And it doesn't matter who how you get over the line. At least we yeah. did. Um, Luton maybe edged it at times in the game, but we were far from outplayed. And like you said, they actually named a stronger 11 than QPR did. I thought maybe our bench in the second half was going to swing it more back in our favour because we had good options didn't really pan out like that. It remained relatively even. Luton had a lot of territory, but we battled hard, put in a good account of ourselves and went to the last 32. So doesn't that sound nice? And our reward is a third round tie against Crystal Palace. Your thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. It's it's not a bad draw, really, London Derby. I think we'll get a pretty good crowd for that one. Um, You know, we haven't played Palace for a while in a competitive game. I know we played them pre-season the other year. And there's a possibility of Eze coming back, which I think will put a few numbers on the gate to see him. And I was listening to the Palace manager last night and he was saying they're taking the cup seriously. He played a full team last night. So it'll be a a tough game for us. They're not going to be playing their reserves like some Premier League teams would. But um, it should be quite an exciting night. And we're at home. We've got a chance against them, haven't we? Yeah, yeah, I think us being at home makes it a more chance of us having a chance in the game. If it had been at their ground, I think less. So people will obviously be hoping it's the Iberi as a derby if he's still there by the time the match comes around. And like you just alluded to, I think it's just good to play a team we haven't played for nearly a decade in a competitive game that adds something to it. Um, it's not the usual mundane fair like technically Luton was earlier this week. Before we get back on to Luton, I know Brian and George discussed it in the last show, but I just also wanted to get your quick thoughts on Plymouth last Saturday. What did you make of that draw? Yeah, I mean, well, the first five minutes, we were sensational. It's like, I thought we were going to win four or five nil the way we started, but we kind of just eased back a bit. We did similar against West Brom and we let Plymouth back in the game. And um, to be fair, well, we had a lot of chances second half and should have won it, but I thought a draw again was about right, really. I thought Plymouth were probably better side first half in, in total. You know, if we take our chances second half, we, we win that game comfortably, really, but that's been a problem going back years now. We, we don't take our chances when they come. And it was a frustrating day, but th- there's positive signs there. You know, we're creating chances, which we weren't a year ago. Um, some of the new signings are looking pretty good. Dembele was excellent again, I thought. And I thought Salah looked a bit more promising when he came on. I know he missed a few chances, but I thought, you know, you could see something in him. So it wasn't all doom and gloom. I think we all said it would probably be a, a tricky start for us. Um, but, you know, a, a draw I thought was about right. Yeah, there were lots of positives and it's harder to play against 10 men than it looks on paper. Mm. And that's what's annoyed me all week, actually, the fact that people keep saying it was against nine men. I mean, come on, they only had nine yeah. men for three minutes at the end of the game. We had, I think, one attack when they had uh, a, we had a two-man advantage that so wasn't particularly fair that all the headlines kept saying QPR failed to beat nine-man Plymouth. Um, but on, on any other day, we take one of those chances. Nobody looks back at the game and everyone's happy this week. It was to find margins how we didn't get over the line. Also wanted to touch on something that has been a theme in both games this week, also on the opening day, is that when QPR score and get ahead, we seem to concede the next goal and often very quickly after we've scored it ourselves. We seem to stop doing everything good that we've done up to getting our goal, drop off. Definitely something the management team need to address though, isn't it? Yeah, definitely in the Plymouth game, you could see it. They started so well. We, we could have scored three in the first couple of minutes. It was such a good start. But then they just sat back and... You could see, I mean, the Plymouth goal was a bit of a weldy. It was a brilliant strike, but 
it was coming. They were starting to get a lot of the ball and they, we were being penned back. And you just think they've got to keep going and get that second goal. The, the Luton one was a little bit unlucky because that was a hell of a finish straight after. They couldn't really do a lot about that. But the Plymouth one was a bit concerning how they just dropped off. It's a bit like watching England in the summer. As soon as they scored, they went, we're done for the day. And you, you need to get that second goal no matter who you're playing. Yeah, I mean, Luton was five minutes. West Brom on the opening day was 10 minutes. Plymouth was a bit longer, 25 minutes. But after these flying starts, we just seem to drop our intensity. And it's a bit odd because there's no reason for it. We should just keep our foot on the gas, stay higher up the pitch. <laughs> it's something we don't want to keep seeing, though, because otherwise it, it can become a mental issue for teams because everybody starts to worry about how many points we're dropping from winning positions and so on and so forth. Hopefully they can stop doing that ASAP. Back to Luton once again, though. Let's preview that one. Now, QPR had a really good record against Luton a few years back. We were unbeaten in seven games and had won six of those. But the last time we were both at this level, two seasons ago, Luton won both games comfortably as they set off towards the Premier League. But this season, their start, they've not started it as I would have personally expected. In the league, they've yet to win. And of course, thanks to us, they're now out of the Cup too. What do you think is going wrong there? Yeah, it's a really surprising start. You look at their squad on paper, you think they're made for the championship. They've got really good forwards. You know, they're a hard-working team, good wide players. I still think they'll do well. And it's only been only played a couple of games still, and they'll be there or thereabouts end of the season. But it's, it's been an odd start for them. And you could see against us in the, in the cup game, you know, they had a lot of the ball, but they, they're just not taking their chances. And they're, they're, you know, they're good forwards. They should be taking a few of these chances. So... They're probably going to give someone a hiding soon. Hopefully, it's not us this week. <laughs> um, it's a yeah, it's, it's a bit of a strange. I, w- I wish they'd have got a win before they played us. So I, I hate these sort of when you play a team on these sort of runs. This is Charity Park Rangers turn up, don't they? Oh, it is. Yeah, I've got it in front of me here. The start, the last one on the sixth of April, and that was their only home win since January. And it does take its toll on teams when you're not winning for that long, and everyone gets angsty, and the crowd are on the backs, and obviously once you go behind in games, it kind of snowballs. They didn't have a particularly great pre-season, pre-season either, looking at their results. Um, but despite sitting 23rd, it should be said that Burnley beat them. And obviously, they can be superb on the day. Portsmouth, they were down to 10 men. Preston, they were playing a team who had a new manager in his first game. So that's never easy. So the somewhat mitigating circumstances for all three league results they've had so far. Do you still think you possibly do? Do you think their target is still going to be automatic promotion this season? I think it should be. They've got the players for it. You know, you don't know. Maybe they'll lose some more before the window shuts. You don't know. But, you know, they should be aiming for that. They've got a strong squad and they were good at this level for a couple of years. They didn't just go out out of the blue. They were in the, around the playoffs for a year before that. So, you know, it's very early on. I think they'll get better and be, be up there by the end of the season. Yeah, I'll be amazed personally if they're not at least say top 10, possibly top six, if not beyond that. Like you say, it'll depend who they possibly lose in the transfer window. And if people come back to them in January as well, looking for their players, because on paper, they remain a strong side. Nine players involved in the last game of last season were involved against Preston last week. So you could argue it's a Premier League team. You just alluded to it before, though they are struggling in front of goal. Only one league goal scored, failed to score in the last two league games. And it took a worldie for them to score against us. Um, Adi Bio up front he tops the league chart with six big chances missed so there's everybody's first goal scorer but if you need one this weekend because he's bound to end that like you said they even played a very strong team against us in midweek didn't they and chasing their first win of the season you could sense he did that to try and maybe get a win get some confidence going but could that now play a part in fatigue in this one it's only three day turnaround it could do yeah I, I was very surprised to see put such a strong side out you know for this stage of the competition you know especially because we got to play the friday so i i definitely thought if Wentz would rest a few and i'm i'm surprised Lewin didn't but it, it's still early in the season you think they should be able to manage two games in in a quick turnaround when when it's still early on in the season but you know maybe that could play in our favor especially with the with the subs late on in game we can maybe win the game late there yeah, I mean, third match in seven days for both sides, so you would have maybe expected more rotation. And Marty Sifuentes, from a QPR point of view, I thought he rotated very cleverly, didn't need a clever use of Cook and Clark Sol to 45 mm-hmm. minutes each. Jimmy Dunn was withdrawn in the second half. Sam Fields rested. There's only really Kenneth Powell who may have tired legs from a QPR point of view. And at least we have two weeks off after this match, so they can just leave it all out there and, and then recover. If we look at the team, Joe uh, Joe Walsh came out of the match with excellent reviews, many people's man of the match. Is he staking a claim for a place? 
think so. He's he's done well whenever he's played. He, he made that one mistake against Cambridge, but apart from that, he played well in the game. I thought he was superb against Lewin. He made some really good saves. He did well in the penalty shootout. You know, it's good to we've got a second choice keeper that can come in. You know, but the last couple of years it's been like, oh, there's no way that the second choice is going to get in. But now you've got two decent keepers, and um, it, it does give Sifwent as a choice. So um, he, he's done really well. He stayed to claim, and and hopefully he gets to play in the the next round as well against like a Premier League team. Yeah, let's be honest. Every QPR fan has been terrified at the idea of Jordan Archer playing in the last couple of years. Um, in terms of him breaking in, it's just so tough for goalies, isn't it? It seems to be no matter what you do in a cup match, the number one will come back in. Um, I think it's more going to take uh, Nardi having a few howlers to cause a change. Um, but like you said, at least Walsh should get another chance in the next round of the cup. In defence, as we say most week, it tends to pick itself unless somebody's injured. But in midfield, competition has heated up this week with the arrival of Nicholas Madsen, who joined since we last did a show last week. What have you made of him in his two appearances so far? Yeah, he's, he's looked quite good. I was surprised he started. He only signed Friday afternoon, didn't he? And he was straight in. But I thought I thought he looked good. He was like neat on the ball. Um, he seemed to work quite well with field. He t- I thought he tied a little bit second half, but he, he, he looks all right. And it, it does give us competition for that. You haven't just got the, the two players there. You, you've got a couple of options now. You've got Dixon Bonner as well, who played last night. They have got options there, which, which is good to see. I would have thought he'd probably start with the same two as last week, Madsen and Field in midfield. But um, he has got the options for Colback as well, who I thought had a pretty good game against Luton as well. Yeah, I think Colback is suspended. There's nothing official. Everyone's kind of looking in the rules, but because it was for dissent, people think he's got two league games out. So um, I think it will be Field and Madsen. Um, and then we've still got Varane on the bench anyway. For me, Madsen, he obviously he's still getting up to the tempo of the game. Sometimes he was standing still a bit too often, waiting for the game to come to him, and he even needs to get used to that. But some switches of the play were superb. There was one against Luton, crossfield pass to Paul Smith, which was a pass players at this level either usually can't see or can't make the pass. So that was good to see. He showed nice control, nice touches, and he's only going to get better as he does adjust. A bit like Varane, who we should say as well, he was much more consistent performance against Luton, I thought. Yeah. Um, good to see. In front of them, Lucas Anderson could potentially be back, but it's hard to see him being risked, I think, when you think we've got the two weeks off after. Just give him the two weeks to get right and then come back afterwards. But which trio do you expect to see behind the striker? I, f- I think Dembele and Smith will definitely start. And then he then he has got a choice. I thought um, Saito did well in the Sheffield United game, but not looks so great in the other two. So he might give Alfie Lloyd a go. I thought was excellent in the, when he came off the bench. But um, yeah, it's it's a tough one. It probably, I think a lot of it depends on that. Luton do attack a lot out wide, so you need a bit of defensive cover. So he, that's how he might he might pick it. I think he maybe will go for Lloyd, who's got a bit more pace and physicality than um Seato. But um, uh, we'll have we'll have to see. But Dembele will definitely start and Smith as well. Yeah, that's I agree. Dembele and Smith are in. I wonder if we might see Saito off the bench, perhaps in this one. And like you said, Alfie Lloyd, he had a good cameo. I guess the question mark with him is whether Sifuentes trusts him in a game like this, tough kind of, I'm going to say a derby. It's always Luton who hate us more than we hate them, isn't it? But a bit of a derby. Um, so it's a tricky one. He may even go with Varane, Field and Madsen to try and get more control in midfield with then Dembele and Smith out wide. It's like you say, those two are definitely going to start. It's just a question of who joins them. That brings us on to the strikers. And of course, that means talking about Lyndon Dykes, who's now officially gone to Birmingham. Somewhere in the region of a million pounds, we believe. Were we right to sell him? Oh, I think so. I mean, he, he's gone from first choice play every week to third choice now, really, hasn't he? So, And he's probably still one of our highest earners because he signed a new contract around a year ago. So I think if you're going to get money for him, just just take it and move on and maybe try and bring someone else since they've got different options. I mean, D- Dykes has done well for us over the years. He, he hasn't been brilliant by any stretch, but, um, you know... He, He's he scored his goals in little clusters, hasn't he? He's, he's he has like three months where he does nothing, and then he'll he'll score some big goals for us. And you know, it shouldn't be underestimated. I know we he stayed up comfortably in the end, but the, the goal he got against Preston was massive for us last year. If we hadn't won that game, we'd have been bang in trouble at the end of the season. Um, so you know, he's done well for us. Good luck to him at his his new club. But I wasn't hugely surprised because he he did seem like quite a long way down the pecking order. Yeah, you're right about his barren runs. We've got some stats on the screen now that you can see. Actually, he's got 
four, five, six months every season where he goes without a goal. And I think that's ultimately the reason they've maybe decided to have a fresh start from both parties for him as well. Mm. We always have to say his commitment was never, ever in doubt, was it? He, yeah. I mean, I have a first time experience as well off the pitch. He's a top bloke too. But on the pitch, if he was your number nine, he just did never score enough goals. He had little hot streaks. You think he's turned a corner. We've discussed it pretty much every season as he found his scoring knack now. And then he doesn't score till April again. And it's a shame that it never really reached the heights. Every QPR fan and obviously Lyndon Dykes probably hoped for. And I have no doubt every QPR fan wishes him well at Birmingham. Although it is a mystery, isn't it? Why are Birmingham still so obsessed with reforming the QPR class of 2022-23? That is so odd, isn't it? It, yeah, they've, they've signed nearly all of them, haven't they? You know, it didn't work out that well for us, so maybe we're different for them. Yeah. In terms of the two strikers we have la- uh, left, Zan Seller. I'm changing how I say his name every time, by the way. Still not sure if anyone wants to put it in the comments. Go for Seller this week. Um, improved all round performances this week. You kind of said it before, wasn't it? But he played 90 minutes in the cup. So would you expect Frey to start, given he didn't feature in the cup at all? Yeah, I think so. I think Frey's done well the last couple of games. He's looked a lot better since, you know, he, he looked very rusty, I'll say. I'll be kind and say rusty last season. But he's looked a lot better. He's looked a lot fitter. Um, his pressing's been really good. He's, he's got a couple of goals under his belt now. And he, um, so I think he'll, he'll start with him. But he's, he's probably an area where they still need strengthening. I think if you're going into the season with just them two, there's your strikers. Um, there's not enough goals in them, you know, in you know, for, for us to be in the in the top half, which is what they're surely aiming for with all the signings they've made. So I do think they might be looking to bring someone else in this week. Yeah, I think there may be a, a loan at the very least that we'd, we'd look to see. Um, I think Seller, like we said, played well this week, definitely improved from what people were talking about the week before. Um, against Plymouth, I think he was almost just trying too hard to score his knees, yeah. but he was much more involved. Some nice touches against Luton. And he took his penalty brilliantly. So that spoke volumes that he wanted to go up first and took it away. He just needs that first goal in open play. And I genuinely think he's going to have a good season after that. Just yeah. needs one to go in off his backside, as they say. Um, but I think it will be Frey who does start against Luton. And that just leaves us with predictions. There's a strong chance that if QPR lose this, we could head into the international break in the bottom three. What are you expecting? <laughs> Well, it's going to be a tough game because they're going to be wanting to get revenge quite quickly after after winning us winning the cup game. I just think if we can, you know, keep keep it tight and don't let them score first. I think the longer it goes about them scoring, the more pressure they're going to get from their crowd. Like I said they haven't won at home for quite a while. You know, try and increase the pressure on them and try and nick something. I, f- I think it'll be a draw again. Um, so I don't think we'll be climbing the table much, but I'm going to go for a one-all draw again. I think it'll be a tight one. Yeah, I think their league form and makes them a harder proposition, especially after losing their first home game 4-1. They won't want to drop more for, uh, more points in front of the home fans. So potentially a, de- a dangerous time to play them. But from a QPR perspective, we can take confidence from the midweek performance. We're beaten in a few games now. Players are starting to settle. You can see it with every even every 45 minutes that are passing. Players are starting to settle down. So I would go with a draw as well. I think it's not out of the question. Could be a good time to play Luton. Still don't think we've settled enough to go away and win this one, but I think it could be actually another 1-1 one, one draw. And I think that would be a good result to keep our little unbeaten run going. I know we're not winning, but staying unbeaten still is positive. And then after the fortnight off, we can kick on into September. Let us know your predictions for this one in the comments and your thoughts on the cup draw as well against Crystal Palace. And that's it. The first month of the season nearly over. We'll see you in a fortnight when we're back to preview the trip to Sheffield Wednesday. Until then... Thanks for watching, and come on you ours. We know who we are. You know who we are. We are QPR.